Welcome to Electron lecture online and before we get into the details of how to calculate the pH of an acid or a base let's take a look at what we call the conjugate acid and bases. What do we mean by conjugate acid and bases? Well the word conjugate means pairing up or belonging together. So there's a, an associated acid to a base or an associated base to an acid and that's why they call them conjugate acid and bases. So what happens for example when you take hydrochloric acid and you put it in solution then it separates the hydrogen from the chlorine and so you end up with a chlorine ion and then the chlorine ion is then considered to be the associated base to the hydrochloric acid HCl or hydrochloric acid and so the, the definition of an, an association like that is a conjugate base has one less hydrogen atom and one more negative charge Ooh, I say, <laughs> it says ch chair here what I meant to say is charge all right I wonder where my brain was on that one. Anyway, so when you take an acid, the conjugate base has one less hydrogen and one more negative charge. Of course, that's automatic because if you take a hydrogen atom away that has a positive charge with it, you then, of course, have one less uh, positive charge and therefore one more negative charge. So let's take a look at this list and see what they look like. So for hydrochloric acid, HCl, the conjugate base is cl chlorine ion, so one less hydrogen, one more negative charge. For nitric acid, we have HNO3, the H goes away, we end up with NO3 minus, so that's a nitrate ion, so one more negative charge, one less hydrogen ion. Hydrocyanic acid, well, HCN takes the H away, you end up with one more negative charge, and so now we have the cyanide ion. The perchloric acid, okay, we have HClO4, so we take the hydrogen away, we end up with the perchlorate ion. Sulfuric acid, H2SO4, very famous acid, we take one hydrogen away, we now end up with hydrogen sulfate ion, and notice that this also can act as an acid, even though it's a conjugate base of sulfuric acid, it can also act like an acid in itself because it can also give away the second hydrogen atom and become the sulfate ion. So this becomes the acid, and this becomes the associated base to this acid, or as we call it, the conjugate base. So that's kind of interesting. So even though this is the associator or the conjugate base to this particular acid, then this becomes the acid and this becomes the conjugate base to this acid. Here we have another example like that. We have carbonic acid, which is H2CO3. We have the bicarbonate ion, one less hydrogen, one more negative charge. Since that's a conjugate base to this acid, it can then by itself also form an acid because it can give away the second hydrogen and then have the associated carbonate ion as its conjugate base. So again, you can see that a conjugate base can become an acid and have its own conjugate base in itself. And now we have, of course, the ammonium ion. Remember, we tend to think of ammonia as a base. When you put ammonia into solution, then they put the ammonium ion. But the ammonium ion can be considered an acid because it can give away that extra hydrogen and then turn into ammonia that would then be the conjugate base to this acid. So it simply means that for a particular substance, if it can donate a hydrogen, it becomes an acid, and therefore the conjugate base would be that same substance with one less hydrogen and therefore one extra negative charge. And so you can see that that in itself can also become an acid because it can give away another hydrogen. Then you can see that there's a, another conjugate base alongside that one. So that's simply the concept of conjugate acids and conjugate bases. It's the relationship when you go from one to the other and one hydrogen is given away or one hydrogen is accepted. That then forms a pair, conjugate acid-base pair. And so that's your basic definition.